Hey friends, and welcome back to another episode of Entitled People. We got some more Reddit stories to check out today, so be sure to like and subscribe and let's get into it guys. I haven't had a sick day in 9 years. For reference, this takes place around 2017, so definitely pre-COVID. I used to work in a training center for a Fortune 500 company. When class wasn't in session, the building normally had 4 people in it. Me, trainee, the boss and the two trainers. I called in sick two days in a row because I had some nasty lung infection. On the second day, the boss starts ranting at me about how kids these days have no discipline, and I haven't taken a sick day in nine years. I tried asking if he wanted me to get a doctor's note, but he was pretty adamant about me coming in the next day. He said that he can decide if I'm actually sick, and he can send me home. I was one of the few women working in that section of the company less than half everyone's age, and felt like arguing with him about it was a bad idea. That next morning I decide to not pump myself full of cold meds, and just go in raw-dogging life. As soon as I walk in the door, the trainers look at me and I say, I'm very sick, might want to give me a wide berth. They looked at me wide-eyed, nodded, and went to a different section of the building. The boss hears me coughing so hard I'm having to do that gasp for air, like I just emerged from the depths. He walks in and goes, oh, you really are sick, you should go home, but I don't understand how you got this sick, and then reminds me, I haven't taken a sick day in 9 years. So I drive home and come back in the next day, the trainers look at me and say, what the hell are you doing here? The boss said that if I'm actually sick he can send me home, I said. They laughed and avoided my section of the building. The boss once again hears me coughing and gasping for air, and comes in and dismisses me, and this time tells me that he doesn't need more proof, I can come back when I feel better. Four days later, Mr. I haven't taken a sick day in nine years, was sick with some nasty lung nonsense, and was out for a week. If only he had more discipline. How dare this movie theater give a disabled person a fair chance at employment? At one of the movie theaters I frequent, there is a ticket scanner who has some kind of medical condition. Cerebral palsy, I believe, though I'm not 100% sure. He's in a wheelchair and his hands are kind of droopy if that makes any sense. His job is basically to check your tickets, or if you bought the ticket online to scan the barcode. He does have a bit of difficulty doing it as you can imagine, but he does a good job of it. After he scans my barcode I always say thank you. The last time I went to that particular movie theater, I was in front of a woman with two younger children. The guy was trying to scan the barcode but was kind of struggling to keep his arm in the exact position that he needed it to be. No worries, me and my cousins were early to the theater, so we had plenty of time to wait. However, the mother was clearly getting frustrated. Eventually the ticket taker managed to scan the barcode and told the mother where she and her children needed to go. I assumed that she would just be on her way. However, I distinctly heard her say, They need to stop hiring. I can't even bring myself to say the word, but you can probably guess what it is. I was absolutely flabbergasted. You hear about this kind of ableism, but to actually see it is a completely different experience. My younger cousin actually whispered to me, Did she just say what I think she just said? All four of us were absolutely horrified, and the fact that she said it loud enough for that poor boy to hear was even worse. It's not his fault. You think he asked to be born this way? However, the saddest thing about this whole situation was that it honestly wouldn't surprise me if that's not the first time he's heard that. Needless to say, I made sure to be extra polite to him. I would have been polite anyways, but I felt he needed extra encouragement about that rude crap. Police officers keep coming to my house looking for my dad, who doesn't live here. Now they're stalking me around town. A few months ago, cops started coming to my house and pounding on the front door. I answered the first time, not realizing it was them. They said they needed to speak with my father. I told them he wasn't there, which was true. His truck was, but he had walked to the local convenience store for a soda. They didn't believe me and kept asking to talk to him. I insisted he wasn't home and asked what they needed. They refused to tell me anything. After a while, they left. My dad usually lives with his girlfriend, and he went back to staying with her after this and didn't address what they wanted. Then they came back pounding on the door all hours of the day or night for a week or more. I read online that unless they say they have a warrant, you don't have to answer the door. So I haven't answered since. I don't think they would give me any more information, since they refused to originally. On and off, they come and pound on the door every so often. 
more often than not when they see his truck, but he rarely comes home for more than a few days, then he goes back to his girlfriend's. Today they came pounding on my door again while I was gone at work, and my sisters were home alone. It really scared them. But my dad says he's coming home, so maybe he will handle it. Then tonight when I was coming home from getting groceries, a police car followed me turn for turn. I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I didn't want to deal with them harassing me if I pulled up to my house. I took a few unnecessary turns in case they just happened to be going the same way, but they followed me the whole time. Finally I parked at my mom's house, and they went on past me. Now I'm anxious to go anywhere with these creeps stalking me. I am sick of them harassing me and scaring me and my sisters. I don't know what to do to stop this. I don't want to be treated like a criminal just because they want to talk to my dad and he is never here and won't deal with them. And someone in the comments said this, I am a lawyer but not your lawyer. The quickest way to end this is to contact a criminal defense lawyer. They will call the police and ask them what this is about. 1. The cops will say that they are looking to ask dad some questions. They may or may not tell the lawyer why. The lawyer will tell them they would not allow the client to talk, so it's a waste of time, and to stop bothering the family until they have a warrant. Or 2. The cops will say they're trying to serve papers, and ask dad to meet them. This is less likely to be true and sometimes a tactic, and most good criminal defense lawyers would know that. The absolutely last thing your dad should do is talk to the cops on his own. But then sometime after that comment, OP updated us with this. Edit. My dad came here this morning and pretty shortly after, the cops arrested him. Apparently, they had a warrant out for him because of an unpaid ticket. My brother paid $200 for his bail, but now they're charging him for a different crime and are asking for a new bail. My neighbor deliberately sprayed pesticides into my food on my grill while I was cooking on it. Long story short, my neighbor, who does not like me, deliberately came out and started spraying chemicals used to kill bugs directly at my grill while I was cooking food. She did this two times in a row. The police say that it is a neighborly disagreement and ask her not to spray her chemicals near my grill while I'm cooking. I went outside and put food on the grill and let it sit for about 7 minutes as I went back inside. When I came back out to turn the food, I opened the grill and was uncomfortable with the flames from some grease burning on the bottom, so I bent down to shut off the gas, and I heard my neighbor's back door slam, and I heard someone running down the stairs. I thought it was unusual but just made a mental note and did not look, because I avoid them as they are typically openly aggressive towards my family and anyone else we have at our property. I began blowing out the flames now that the grill was turned off. I stood there for a few minutes blowing out the small flames on the bottom. I say this because I was inhaling heavily to do this, and now I'm upset about that. I decided to remove the steaks and leave the corn on to keep warm, and so I did that and closed the grill. When I closed the grill, I was face to face with my neighbor, who was spraying pesticides called Seven directly at the back of my grill, roughly two feet from my face. I was shocked, but it took me a few seconds to process, and as I was walking back into my house, I was putting together in my mind what she was doing. I waited inside a few minutes to see if she would finish spraying her trees. Maybe three minutes later, I look out the window and realize she was gone. I immediately went back outside to remove the corn from the grill, and as I did this, she came back outside in the same fashion. Slamming her door and actually running down the steps, I could hear her feet on the steps. She began spraying directly behind the grill again. At this point I confronted her and asked what she was doing, and I asked her if she understood that she was spraying chemicals into my food. I began filming on my phone at this point. She states on the video that I should move my grill. I lost my temper and began telling her what I thought of her. I yelled at her for about a minute and all the while she continued to spray chemicals at the grill, pretending to be spraying her trees. She clearly understood that she was spraying toxic and highly flammable chemicals at the grill while I was cooking food for my family. I informed her that I was going to call the police. I said loudly, you tried to poison my family. She answered back, you got that right? I asked her, what did you just say? And she said, I told you to go ahead and call the police. And I said, no, I said you tried to poison my family and you said you got that right. She laughed and shook her head and I went inside to call the police. I had to throw away nearly $80 worth of food because of this and order takeout for my family. The grill, $1,200 retail, is not usable. Weber Grill Company says I can use their cleaners to clean it.
but it has to be boiling water and there's special cleaner. The grill could have exploded. I could have served that food to my family and poisoned them. There are so many terrible scenarios that could have happened. Boyfriend was wrongfully towed from our complex. I got revenge. About a year ago, my boyfriend was towed from our apartment complex lot. I guess they didn't look for his parking permit before deciding to tow him in the middle of the night. After he explained it to the leasing office, they called the company and told them to release his car at no charge. When he showed up to claim his car, the employee spit in his face, threatened to call the cops if he didn't pay up, and this whole ordeal ended up costing him $250 plus lost wages. He called me to tell me all this when he finally made it to work, and I flipped my crap. My mom always taught me that sometimes you have to be a real bitch to get things done, and for the first time in my life, I decided to be a bit of a Karen. For context, the company that owns our apartment complex also owns hundreds in this area, and they have a contract with this towing company for most of their properties. After figuring this out, I called the main office for the company that owns our apartment, and eventually got transferred to the owner. She was absolutely appalled at what happened, and told me she would call them and give me updates. In the meantime, I called the tow company and chewed them out so bad they initially hung up on me, until I called a second time and asked to speak to whoever was in charge. The manager told me he would review the security footage and get back to me. After I spoke to the tow company, the leasing company called me back, and said that they're at the end of their rope with the sheer amount of mistakes this tow company has made, and their contract was in jeopardy. They mentioned they're working on getting a refund, and to document if there was any damage to the vehicle. The manager of the towing company called me back moments later, apologized, and offered to hand deliver a check for the full refund amount. I haven't seen their tow trucks in our lot ever since. And that's going to be it for today. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and also hit that subscribe button for more. So have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.